program. We are glad you're here. It has been a busy one today. Uh, spent a lot of time early uh, giving you live coverage of Alabama being celebrated again at the, at the White House. We had the president and we also uh, heard from Nick Saban. Uh, now we're going to hear from Philip Stutz, who does, who's not a reporter, uh, but he's a friend of ours. And uh, somehow Philip, with all his great influence in Washington as a uh, political and, and media strategist, uh, managed to uh, an invite, uh, which isn't surprising because Philip uh, hangs out at the White House and Capitol and pretty much everywhere else where power uh, matters. Uh, Philip, thank you for the time. Uh, appreciate you being with us. And uh, I'm just going to sit back and listen to you describe what you uh, witnessed and experienced earlier, not that long ago, at the White House. Good afternoon. Hey, Paul. Good to hear from you. Uh, yeah, I am not a reporter, but I do play one on your show. So, uh, <laughs> well, by the way, you're, not only you're, you're not a reporter, you're, you're also a best-selling author. We had you on a couple weeks ago for Fire yeah. Them Up, the uh, seven uh, digital, uh, seven lies digital marketers sell. So you, you, I'm sure you dropped a few uh, books off for the president and, and uh, Mrs. Trump. I had him sign a few. All right, let me give you some of the key highlights. Uh, first of all, best dressed, Tony Brown. Uh, who wore a black fur hat, uh, almost Russian-esque. I don't know if there was well. a subliminal message or not. Uh, I had a, uh, a good conversation with Senator Doug Jones, who told me to tell you hello. Hey, by the way, the uh, last, one of the yep. last times that uh, Alabama was at yep. the White House, Senator Jones actually was our correspondent. He, he may have told you that. He did. That's what he said. He goes, <laughs> you know, the last time I talked to old Feinbaum, I was right here. So uh, he said uh, hello. Um, and uh, I didn't quite get on the front row, Paul. I was on uh, the second row, seat 26. Ooh. And so if any Georgia fan is, is smart enough to understand that message, then uh, <laughs> don't know that that's second and 26. So, Two, 226. Uh, amazing day out there today. It was really, really fun. Uh, you know, uh, the president made a lot of jokes. Uh, and one of them was uh, that no – uh, previous visit to the White House that ever invited Saban into the Oval Office. And uh, so he needled past administrations on that one. And, uh, you know, the, the team, everybody was very receptive. It was a great event out there. Yeah, I want to I focus on that for a second because uh, it, it's just hard to imagine uh, the president not having Coach Saban in. But as you know, you were there. These things are fairly quick and staged, and the president has other things going on. Uh, so, uh, but that, that was pretty cool to go. I mean, that's, that's as you know, uh, you've been there enough times. That, that is the spot in the White House that everyone yearns for. So, totally true. And another mutual friend of ours is uh, Caitlin Collins, the White House correspondent for CNN. And she is. Uh, she told me on the grounds that Saban was making recruiting calls from the White House. Oh my that goodness! Is a, that is not a joke. Is that really against uh, federal election law? <laughs> Only if he paid them. <laughs> so he didn't do that. Now, it, now, if 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 the pre, if Saban had been sitting there, standing there in the Oval Office, and he put the president on, that that would be some sort of uh, violation, wouldn't it? I, I think it's just great recruiting as an Alabama alum. <laughs> we always we always try to get the most objective reporters on. When Doug Jones, who's got an Alabama connection, we we don't we don't uh, we don't strive uh, for anything other than uh, fair and balanced here on the Fine Bomb Show. So uh, we, we we had it. We, we watched. We we had we broadcast it. We saw it. But we, there's only so much you can see on television. Uh, give us some of the uh, behind the scenes uh, machinations going on there today. It was pretty neat, you know, when the when the song of the, the the president song comes out and the horns go off, uh, and the president comes out. He walked out with Coach Saban. The team kind of came from the White House and walked down the steps that you see them standing on, and a uh, huge press corps in the back snapping pictures. And uh, you know, the president definitely had remarks, and he let you know one of the funnier moments, and maybe you saw this. But he said, you know, he made the remarks about how big the Alabama football team was, and he kept going back to how much money they will make one yeah. day. Yeah, oh, yeah. And everything was about, oh, you guys are going to make a lot of money. And, I mean, and it, it was funny. Everybody was laughing. And then, of course, Tua was way up above uh, on the steps, wasn't even close to the president. The president like, called him out and said, what are you doing up there? Come on down. And uh, But it was funny. Uh, everybody had a good time. And, uh, you know, we had – U.S. Senators there uh, with Doug Jones. Uh, we had all the congressmen there. 
We had Cabinet Secretaries Joe Manchin, the senator from West Virginia. I saw him there. Saban's childhood friends was there. Um, Sonny Perdue, the Agriculture Secretary, was there. So it was a really neat lineup. The, the, the most interesting guest of all, Jeff Sessions, was there on the front row. Yeah, no, it, it, uh, and for those who don't know who Jeff Sessions is, uh, he's a longtime uh, senator from, from Alabama who gave up his uh, – seat uh, to when he was selected as the attorney general. He, he and the president were very close friends. And it was only yesterday, Philip, that the president called out Sessions again. He, he's done that more than once, Paul. <laughs> but he uh, uh, I think I think your, your, our mutual friend, uh, Caitlin, uh, asked him on the rope line what he thought. And he said, roll tide. Very, very noncommittal. Well, that's that's a diplomat. And, you know, um, I was with a friend today and he said, you know, with all the chaos that surrounds Washington, D.C. And, you know, at the same time, we're at the White House. Mark Zuckerberg is testifying in Congress. It was a peaceful, quiet day. And you just couldn't believe that all the chaos is swirling around there. And uh, Trump was humorous and fun. And the players reacted uh, very kindly to it. And it couldn't have gone better. And, and Philip, uh, to say the least, there is a lot going on. Uh, not only do we have the, the news from late last night, but uh, you have the Syrian conflict going on. The president canceled a trip to South America on Friday. So uh, you listen, you, you have to know that in the Situation Room or wherever, uh, serious decisions are being made right now uh, about uh, about the Mideast. And meanwhile, he you would you would never have noticed when uh, you're watching the president uh, uh, on stage uh, with, with the Alabama Crimson Tide. I think you get a sense that the president loves these moments uh, of fellowship uh, with the players. Uh, you know, obviously his past with football and professional yeah. football with the USFL, uh, you could really get a sense that this was a moment where he could, like, relax. And he took pictures for at least 20 minutes after the event. Uh, the literally the Secret Service was finally like, "Sir, you've got to go." But he was having a blast out there. Uh, it was, it was. Uh, you could see how happy. He it looks like a pretty nice day for Washington this time of the year. It was 55 and sunny, the most beautiful time of year to ever be in Washington D.C. is in the spring, and uh, the cherry blossoms were out, and it was a great day. Philip Stutz uh, covering uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide uh, for us uh, at the, the White House. 20 minutes. I mean, Philip, uh, if I remember, la not last year, the year before, uh, we had uh, coverage of it. Uh, President Obama, this was now his fourth time with Alabama. I mean, he, he was in and out uh, pretty quickly. It looked like, you know what, I've done this four times with you guys. I really don't have anything else to say. Uh, but spending 20 minutes taking pictures is extraordinary, isn't it? It was crazy, and yeah, there were a lot of fans there too, Paul. Um, and the the fan, the only complaint I heard the fans was they had to travel to another neutral site to see Alabama. <laughs> but, but 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 overall, uh, the president was was literally it, taking pictures. Tell of me, every tell me this player. now again. The president reminded the Crimson Tide he was at the game, which uh, we all yeah. remember. He did it about three times. Actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. again. Uh, no reason. Uh, he, he he did fail to mention that he left while Alabama was down thirteen nothing. But that's, but but why, why bother correcting the facts in Washington? But 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 Philip, I have to ask you this because uh, you know the White House is not an easy place to uh, snart uh, an invitation to. And forget you because you're a mover and shaker and uh, among the uh, the most influential uh, people in that city in what you do. But how, how does a normal, how do you get invited to something like this? Sure. First of all, your condescension, I can feel through the phone right now. And <laughs> second, second of all, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of the uh, Alabama congressional offices and okay. their staffs. It's, um, you know, probably a lot of uh, lobbyists with connections. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, uh, there was a lot of, Alabama, you would you'd be surprised at how much, you know, staff or people from the university were there. I saw um, the board of trustees, and they had their families there, um, and and so and I saw Edgar Weldon there, and so I, you know, an Alabama alum. Oh, very and, prominent and so, person, you know, sure. Just a bunch of people call and uh, come up and uh, fly up and spend time. It's an incredible opportunity, um, no matter what the team is, for the president to honor their sports team and to have the opportunity to go up and spend the day at the White House is, is unlike anything you'll ever have the opportunity to do. And people take advantage of that if they can. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I have to tell you, Philip, uh, and, and, you know, we've had uh, Senator Jones on this program many times, but 
I am going to give you a higher mark for uh, reporting than Doug Jones. Uh, now, at the time, he was just a former U.S. attorney. Uh, he had not been elected to the Senate, but, but, but you, you, and I don't know what uh, Mark and John think, but I think Philip has pretty much won this job. Well, you know what? Uh, we're going to have to do some media training for him if, uh, if, if I'm ahead of him. So we'll, we'll go to work on that immediately. Yeah. I mean, he was kind of out of breath and a little too partisan. I mean, you've, you've, you've given us behind the scenes uh, minutiae that I would expect from a seasoned veteran. So uh, well done, Philip. I just want to know what recruits he was calling. That's all I care about. What, who is Nick Saban calling from the West Wing of the White House? Um, probably someone from a red state. That would be my guess. Hey, Trump made a good point. He did win Alabama by 32 points. He sure did. He said, didn't he say, like, I think it was really more, but, you know, they took some away from me. Yeah, well, I, I think he knows that he doesn't get specific facts exactly right sometimes, and he thought that the press <laughs> would jump all over him for it. Too. Well, great stuff, Philip. Uh, we hopefully will see you very soon. Philip, who, uh, whose book, Fire Them Now, we had him on. Uh, by the way, it seems like that book's done quite well. Uh, it has, and uh, we're, we're rolling into the second part of this wave uh, in the next few weeks. I'm going to go into New York next week for another press blitz, but the book's been great. Feedback's been great. Thank you for having me on. Philip Stutz, White House correspondent for the Feinbaum Network. We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, great to have That was fun. That was really cool. Uh, and I know uh, this happens once a year, so why not blow it out? We are going to take a break. More of your phone calls at 855 242 